Greetings, captains and admirals. This is the Sarcasm Detector coming to you from over the North Pole in the Soul System. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought Cruiser Tier 6. We're going to start out by looking at the ship stats and the aggro tanking build I have set up on the ship. Following that, we're going to take a look at the different shield visuals available. And at the end, we will give the final verdict on the ship. There won't be a action clip in this video. That actually has its own video, which I will be linking in the description. And the actual link for that should also be popping up on your screen right now. Let's move on with the video now. In addition to the information I will be providing in this video review, I am also including a link to the STO Skill Planner build that I have set up on this ship. But first, let's take a look at the ship's mastery package. The ship comes with the standard Dreadnought Cruiser package, which includes hull regen, some additional armor resistances, some critical hit, and 10% hull HP, as well as the tier 5 mastery called Energy Web. Now, this particular trait is a little bit ironic. And you can see here it says activating beam overload, surgical strike, or cannon rapid fire applies the Energy Web. It's ironic because the ship cannot actually run surgical strikes. And also, you really do not want to be running any kind of cannon rapid fire on a big dreadnought cruiser like this. So obviously, this trait does not fit very well with the ship itself, but will probably do very well on some other more nimble craft, such as the Phantom. The stats for the ship. I have set up 15.3 power transfer rate. And the bonus defense, once I get up and moving, will jump up to 88, almost 89%. 91k hull, 11k shield facing. Resistances are a little low at the moment, but once we trigger the attract fire plus some of the other traits come into play, these will jump up significantly. Crit chance and crit severity. And the flight speed and turn rate. This is actually quite a fairly nimble ship for its size. Um, almost on par with some of the battle cruisers out there. I have in fact been able to outturn ships like the Odyssey, which are a fraction of the ship size. Moving on to the gear, my standard complement of damage tree pens at Epic, including the advanced radion anti-proton beam here, using an Iconian three-piece set, deflector, engine and warp core, and actually using the Dyson Regenerative instead of a fourth piece Iconian. Consoles, we have the Plasmonic Leech, Conductive RCS with EPS. If you can't afford one of these, you can actually craft a regular EPS console. They're very cheap to make for it right now, so go ahead and use one of those. They are beneficial. The regenerative integrity field from the Samsar. And the bioannual infusion circuit. Using three threat generating consoles, plasma, plasma consoles from the embassy. And these have flow caps. And the standard anti proton locator consoles. And some elite Tholian mesh weavers.
My skills really haven't changed that much. I should probably do a respec. Adding a little bit into threat, because this is a tank build. Probably dropping some of the performance down to three and adding some extra hull plating and armor reinforcement. And perhaps adding some insulators as well. Specializations, I'm still using intelligence primary and pilot secondary. Let's take a quick look at the traits I have running. Blade of Shell, Biotech Patch, Elusive, Give It, Give Your All, Intense Focus, Nanite Repair Matrix, Point Blank Shot, Beam Training, Fleet Coordinator, or Starship Traits, Reciprocity, Council of Thought, Invincible, all hands on deck and emergency weapon cycle. For the space reputation traits, I'm running enhanced armor pen, energy refrequencer, auxiliary power configuration. This is the offensive and precision, as well as active hull hardening. So you can see my traits are a mixture of both DPS and survivability traits. Uh, the reason for that is this is a tank, an aggro tank, and sadly in this game, aggro is very dependent on DPS. So here we have the stations, and I'll start off with the engineer running Ox to Structural Integrity, Engineering Team 2, and Emergency Power to Weapons 2 and 1. For Science, running Polarized Hull, Hazard Emitters 2, and a Science Team 3. And for Tactical, I've gone with Attack Pattern Delta 1, Attack Pattern Beta 1, FA 3, Copy of Chemocyte, Attack Team, and override subsystem safeties one in here. Now, since chemocyte laced weaponry has been recently either bugged or over nerfed to the point of uselessness, you can possibly drop this, um, replace it with tag team, and then you can use this universal as something else. As an engineer, you can put in emergency power two weapons one here and swap this emergency power to weapons 2 for a reverse shield polarity or perhaps you can add in one of the science powers here so possibly drop this down the hazard emitters down to a ensign slot and put in either an energy siphon or whatever science power you like to put in for Duty officers, running here a warfare specialist, you can put in something else like uh, Tikreen for if you're fighting Tholians, or you can put in Tuller to increase the cooldown reduction of Fire at Will, or even you can go with some Matter Antimatter specialists to increase your power systems. Or a warp core engineer, I'm sorry. So this is the very basic layout of the ship. She performs very well as a tank. She is very, very solid. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the different shield visuals available. The Iconian Resistance Shield.
the Dyson Regenerative Shield. The Terran Task Force Shield. The Aegis Covariant Shield. The Counter Command Covariant Shield. The Delta Alliance Unimatrix Shield. The Dielectric Oscillation Shield. The Jem'Hadar Resilient Shield. The Mako Resilient Shield. The Riemann Prototype Covariant Shield. The Nukara Crystalline Resilient Shield. Last thoughts on this ship. I believe that this is a fairly decent dreadnought cruiser on par with the Sheshar. Some advantages it has over the Sheshar it is that it is a little bit more maneuverable. It is more flexible. It has both intel and command seating. It can fit the Tholian Meshweaver pets and is theoretically cheaper and easier to get. However, the Sheshar will definitely still output more damage than this ship. Final verdict, I give it a very solid 8.5 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. Have yourselves a good night.